in 1965, when two cosmonauts landed back on Earth in the snow-covered forest of Russia's Ural region. They feared their simple pistols wouldn't be enough to fight off the giant bears or hungry packs of wolves that roamed the area. Although the men survived the experience without coming across any animals, the concern remained. How would cosmonauts better protect themselves in case they landed in a dangerous place? That's how the primary survival weapon for Soviet cosmonauts, the TP-82, came to be. Created in consultation with the former cosmonaut, the weapon was designed specifically for the harsh environment in Soviet territory, not for fighting Americans. According to documents and interviews of former cosmonauts, it was used by space explorers for almost 20 years. Dozens of astronauts visiting the International Space Station have practiced with it. Few have even spoken publicly about it. Even though it's an open secret, to this day, the Russian Federal Space Agency still refuses to talk about the weapon. But in case there's any doubt about the TP-82's existence, there's one on display in a Russian history museum. Some in the American space program during the Cold War remain skeptical of its stated non-combat purpose. Back in the Cold War era, and before the space shuttle program, crews required a protective shell that could shield them during their re-entry to Earth. For example, the Apollo program crews were protected inside capsules that dropped into the ocean and were later retrieved by the Navy. But for the Russians, the story was different. In the 1960s, the Soviet space program created the Soyuz, their own series of spacecraft mounted on a rocket. Their preferred method of re-entry was also aboard a capsule. However, instead of splashing into the sea, it landed on Soviet territory. With over 8.5 million square miles, the Soviet Union was the largest country in the world. It was easy for a space capsule to get lost in such a large area. And that's precisely what happened to cosmonaut and Air Force Major General Alexei Leonov. In March 1965, he and crew member Pavel Belyayev participated in the epic Voskhod 2 mission aboard the Voskhod 3KD spacecraft, during which Leonov became the first man to ever complete a spacewalk. However, the task was riddled with errors from the beginning, and the spacecraft couldn't restore its center of mass for 46 seconds before re-entry. As a consequence, their capsule drifted way off course, 600 miles off the expected landing site. Although flight controllers had no idea whether Leonov and Belyayev had survived or not, their families were told that they were safe and resting. In reality, the men crash-landed in the desolate and snow-covered forest of Russia's Ural region. When it became clear to the men that they would not be picked up anytime soon, they geared up for their first night in this inhospitable forest. At the time of their mission, a Soviet cosmonaut's basic survival kit consisted of a simple Makarov pistol, a compass, matches, a machete, a fishing kit, strobe light, radio, medical kit, and wool clothing items. NASA missions also equipped their astronauts with a sharp machete, in the rare case of a jungle landing. Since both of the men were familiar with the taiga, a Russian word for snow forests, they carried their loaded guns and plenty of ammunition with them. It was mating season, and there was a large possibility that either bears or wolves could become aggressive with them. Thankfully, a Russian aircraft located them, but the area was so dense with foliage that helicopters couldn't land. The two cosmonauts had to spend the night in freezing 20-degree weather inside their capsule. A rescue party skied to their area the next morning, and they were able to light a fire. They spent another, more comfortable night in the area, and the following day, they skied down to safety. 
Leonev and Balgayev became a myth amongst Russian cosmonauts. The true survival tale is still talked about 55 years later, and rumors keep fueling the story. Some say that the men fought off bears, and that wolves scratched at their capsules hatch. But the truth is, neither Leonov nor Belyaev encountered any animals. Only one of the rescue aircraft spotted and chased away a wolf pack, a couple of miles away from the escape module. However, this terrifying experience drove Leonov to advocate for a made-from-scratch cosmonaut survival pistol for future missions. Initial development for this specialty survival weapon began in the late 1970s, with Leonov's advice and a team of specialists in the popular Tula arms plant. The TP-82, which first entered service in 1982, was a triple-barrel shotgun that eventually became a staple of the Soyuz portable survival kit. According to rumors, the gun was also provided to various other Soviet Air Force units, especially for air crews at risk of crash landing in other inhospitable regions. At first glance, the TP-82 looked like a large pistol. However, it was actually a convertible shotgun, meaning it was a double-barrel shotgun mated to a short-barrel rifle. Out of its three separate barrels, two of them were chambered for 40-gauge ammunition. The lower rifle barrel used the same rounds as the Soviet AK-74 assault rifle. The gun's buttstock was detachable to fit better inside the tiny Soviet space capsules. In addition, the device had a hidden blade that could be used as a machete to chop wood for fire and shelter. The weapon was powerful enough to deter a thousand-pound brown bear and small enough to fit in the space capsule. Astronaut Dave Wolf, who spent a few months aboard the Mir Russian space station in the late 90s, agreed that the space weapon was, quote, a wonderful gun. I found it to be well-balanced, highly accurate, and convenient to use. After its design, the Soviet Union supplied all its missions with the weapon. It was first used in the Soyuz T-6 spacecraft in June 1982. From 1986 on, the TP-82 became a permanent staple in the survival aid kits of every mission. It was better to be safe than be unprepared when coming across a bear. The TP-82 weapon remained part of the Soyuz portable survival kit, used by international and multicultural crews until 2007. It was then publicly announced that all remaining ammunition stocks had become unusable, and the gun was supposedly withdrawn. But since spring 2011, when NASA decommissioned its space shuttles, all International Space Station missions use Russian Soyuz capsules. Although that custom-made gun reached the end of its shelf life, the survival kit still includes a Russian arm, likely the MP-443 or a Makarov pistol. The Russian Space Agency, however, doesn't acknowledge or discuss the use of the TP-82 or its supported successors. Before boarding the Soyuz to travel to space, astronauts go through extreme preparation. As part of their space education course, they're taught system and equipment maintenance, workstation organization, communication with mission controls, scientific research, and a hardcore crew safety training experience. It's said that astronauts of all nationalities, including American ones, also train with the TP-82. As part of their intense training, the astronauts have to complete a survival camping crash course in the Black Sea and the Siberian forest. They practice shooting and survival, all based in cosmonaut Leonov's Voskhod 2 story. But neither NASA nor the International Space Station has released any sort of footage of the training. The only available photographs of people using the guns for training are two private spaceflight participants, who happily posed with the weapon in their hands. The only available model of the gun is in a Moscow museum. As of late, the International Space Station astronauts are leaving their pistols behind. 
according to an article by space journalist James Oberg for the IEEE Spectrum Science magazine. The crews nowadays are asked whether they wish to carry a weapon. Most of them say no. Mr. Oberg vehemently believes that no weapon should travel to space, due to the astronauts' mental pressure in these critical missions. He suggested that, quote, presence of the gun, especially in light of recent space team psychological problems, might be an invitation to a future disaster. As more studies prove the impact a mission can have on astronauts, mental health has become a higher priority. Oberg believes that weapons should only be packed inside spacecraft in very unique circumstances. In his article, he proposed that a weapon should only be usable in case of an off-course landing, which was its original purpose in the first place. The journalist also said, the gun should be stashed inside a closed compartment, only accessible from the outside of the Soyuz spacecraft, so the astronauts can only get to it after landing. However, Oberg's idea never received any conclusive answers. In this era, when GPS and satellite communications are more precise than ever, a situation similar to the Voskhod 2 stranding incident is highly unlikely, albeit possible. In 2008, a Soyuz capsule made a re-entry 250 miles off its original course. When Mission Control lost track of them, the crew was able to call them with a satellite phone, which is included in their updated survival kit. For almost an hour, this capsule, which carried South Korea's first astronaut, was off the grid. According to Oberg's 2014 article, the gun and ammo is still an official item on the personal survival kit of those astronauts who choose it. And while a standard pistol would not stop an angry bear attack, it might still be useful for other extreme survival situations. Even if the gun's real purpose is fighting off animals back on Earth, traveling to space with loaded weapons remains a touchy subject. <laughs>